Oh, would you do it for us? Yeah, there's a lot of oi. Yeah. Oi? You know, and she's like, she's like, don't you like this? But like, then suddenly it's like, why are you, why are you moving that? Like she forgets her accent and drops it at times. Yes. And people <laughs> still believe her. Laura, to be <laughs> fair. Thank like, you. Yeah, Tom, very much. Tell me much, mate. So Laura, we won't make you do the um, interview in your speedy British accent. <laughs> yeah. Um, but I, I loved uh, Trial by Fire. And, and the heart of the film for me is really a story about empathy and human connection between your two characters. But I just wondered how it was for you as actors portraying that connection through the plexiglass and the scenario of the prison visit. Yeah, kind of technical in a way, wasn't it? Yeah, I think I, I appreciate that you brought up the letters. Maybe you want to tell that story because I feel like that's what we brought to that space and that was the, our, the, our correspondence the initially. E the email, yeah. And, yeah, yeah. Well, Laura had a great initiative to just email e each other, quite personal stuff. So, without getting too in depth, you know, we- I know we... everything about Jack O'Connell. <laughs> You've heard it here. <laughs> but it was, it was just a good idea, wasn't it? To like- It was. Feel like, have you done that before? Never. You know, so why was your first? Yeah. Cool. You're my first, Jack. And, and also, did <laughs> you- getting very personal. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody's um, laughing. <laughs> David Grand's article in the New Yorker I found really gripping. It's it's a, it's a wonderfully written piece. It, yes. it, it, it won the Polk Award for investigative journalism that year, so I'm not alone in feeling that way. Neither are you. What was it um, particularly in the article that you found compelling and made you want to put the story on the screen? Well, two things. I think it was uh, it really suggested this remarkable relationship between these two people, who, but for this random act of kindness, would not have changed each other's lives. That spoke to me. But it also was a kind of microcosm of everything wrong with the criminal justice system in America. Everything from the junk science to the prosecutorial misconduct to the unfairness of class and poverty that determines one's uh, inability to really get, be properly represented. As, as you say, that's the, the element of connection and empathy. Mm -hmm. um, you, you have to sort of bring that out in the story through the scenario of, of prison visits as they did in real, in real life and through plexiglass. And I just wonder what the challenges of uh, doing that for you as a filmmaker were and maybe some of the opportunities as well. That sure. That could, yeah. Well, um, look, I worked very closely with Jack and we did our research and talked about, went to prisons and did, you know, met people and did all that. And I worked with Laura apart, but I really did not bring them together at all until those scenes because I wanted those scenes to have the discovery and the awkwardness and the growth that they needed to have. And they knew what I was doing, but it didn't stop that from happening. And, and, and I, we shot in sequence, and it almost became like a little two-hander, almost like a, a play that was chronological as it went on day after day as we shot those scenes. And I think it gave it something particular. Ed mentioned that he had kind of tried to keep you away from each other as well. Did that sort of, it was that partly work. the, the when the, he said what? <laughs> <laughs> like before you, well, obviously before you started filming, you probably didn't have chance to meet anyway, but like whilst you were on set, did? I was in the same makeup trailer every morning, like. Is yeah. that what he said? I think I think he's I, to seem more profound, I think. Yeah. <laughs> I think what he meant perhaps was, he really let, he did try to, with continuity, give us our first scene of meeting when we really had had one time we've seen each other. So our first day was their first in-person meeting. Mm. And so we had had, our, our depth of knowing each other was through our correspondences versus weeks of rehearsal where we'd become so comfortable and familiar that um, perhaps there was something um, like this odd intimacy that I think we did have from knowing so much through our correspondence but not having a ton of in-person time together. Yeah, yeah. And that was sort of a delicious thing to add to the space um, while being actors and doing what we do anyway. Mm. But, but, you know, it's rare to play out, in my, from my perspective, a love story that is about unconditional loving. It's about seeing someone for their truth, beyond flaw, beyond judgment, beyond profiling, and just see the person. And, um, you know, we've both been in love stories in movies and you're running from the person. And here we are 
with a barrier between us, and yet it was the most available intimacy I felt with another person in a, in a story, in a film. Yeah, it, it must be tough to take your own perspective on somebody that has been condemned and, and, and publicly charged, uh, famously charged, with something so heinous. Like it, it must be really tough. It, it's quite unique, isn't it, to just try and accept someone and, and, and kind of make your own mind up about them. It's quite amazing of Elizabeth Gilbert, I think, yeah. And I just wondered how involved um, Elizabeth Gilbert was in um, the filmmaking process and what she kind was, of insights she gave she you. She was remarkably generous and available to us. Uh, not just to talk about Todd or her experience, she gave us all of her letters and Todd's letters, and that was a wonderful window. She also was very, very available to Laura. And for Laura to have, for an actor to have the real person there as someone to mine, you know, actors are, are sponges, and, and, and Laura particularly took a number of very interesting characteristics and attitudes that I think informed her performance. The end of a, a true story on film often gives us you know, photographs of what mm -hmm. the real characters look like, which, mm -hmm. which is an effective mm -hmm. ending, but we're kind of used to that, and you give us something very difficult and um, different, which yeah. I found uh, very powerful. Um, could you just talk a bit about your, your choice there? And well, you know, this is real life, and I, I, we'd been involved in these little, not little, but these two lives, and I think at the end I wanted to contextualize it into the broader picture. And when you see that Republican debate and you hear the audience and their attitude, I think suddenly it dawns on you that this is real, it's happening to America right now. It's, it's in the larger context of something that's happening to America right now. And when I see them all light up there, I don't just see Rick Perry. I see this particular political moment. It's Rick. Thanks very much. Ladies and gentlemen, you're watching Hey You Guys. Hey You Guys, huh? Hey you guys, Is that yeah. from the Goonies? It is indeed. Yeah. Nice. Hey!